The individuals you are about to see today are mothers, grandmothers, fathers, professionals, role models, and maybe your next door neighbor. They all share one thing in common. They are all recovering gamblers. What may have started out as a fun, relaxing, carefree night of gambling blossomed into a chaotic life-changing event. The silent addiction, as it is called, that has claimed many victims. Because gambling is so socially acceptable, how can anyone become addicted? In a few minutes you will see and hear some tragic stories, but also remarkable recoveries. Consequences for the choices we make. We have all paid a very high price, but we are the lucky ones because we are here to tell our story. There have been many others who are unable to cope with the guilt, shame, financial losses, and isolation that have taken their own lives and no longer are with us. The recovery process, either with a better choice, gambling treatment program, which we have in Connecticut, or GA, is a process where we are given the tools to work towards recovery that have saved our lives. But what happened after we completed the recovery program, we were not prepared for. We are always reminded of what we did wrong, but never told of what we have done right. We are looked upon as bad people, thieves, some may have even served time in prison, unemployed, relationships damaged, depressed, isolated, and suicidal. Many of these topics were never discussed in treatment, and sometimes even with the tools we were given for successful recovery of not gambling, these real-life issues are difficult to deal with. I will stop now and let you listen to these real stories and let you decide on how these challenges and struggles are affecting not only us, but many others in recovery. What as professionals can be done to address these issues into the recovery process? I started gambling back in 1994. And it began in 2003. Started at a very young age, uh, probably when I was playing football and baseball in high school. And that was in about 2005. I started um, gambling with going to the casinos, um, playing bingo. Started playing uh, well, mostly sports, betting on sports with a local bookie. And I like to um, go to the track and um, OTB and bet on the horses. By within a year and a half, I was up to $100 slots and had lost almost half a million dollars. I was spending money I did not have. Um, when I was uh, um, indicted, they said that um, I supposedly had taken $500,000, which we never saw proof of that $500,000. Um, they did reduce it to $339,000, and I was never given proof of that money that they said that they had um, found missing. Problem, of course, I didn't want to admit that it was a problem, but when I came back from that conference in Reno, I obsessed, as many problem gamblers do, I know, uh, about that machine. If I could only get back to that machine, that machine that, that was lucky for me. I always thought it was a problem, a problem that I could solve without anybody's help. I became aware of uh, my gambling problem almost immediately after um, probably a couple months after I started playing bingo, um, knew that it was going to um, become a real problem. Um, I did, I played blackjack and slot machines and it began in 2003. When did you think it became a problem? In 2003. I knew I had a problem because intellectually I'm pretty smart, but as we know, intellectually, and wisdom are not the same. And um, it really wasn't until I got fired from my job for uh, stealing funds from my employer and uh, ended up in a 12-step program that I really realized what it was about. Um, well, unfortunately, I was incarcerated twice for the same charges. Um, I went away in 2004, and I was uh, gone for a little over a year. And I was reincarcerated in 2007 um, for the same charges, not being able to um, pay my restitution, which involved violating my probation. So I went back to prison for another um, 18 months. 
and I was incarcerated for 27 months due to um, the indictment that I received in 2005. It was a struggle daily um, in this atmosphere. Um, I, it was a time of my life that I would like to forget. I was, I was actually technically not arrested, but I was incarcerated because of it. How I coped with my incarceration was um, pure devastation is how I coped with it. And that devastation started with having to tell my nine-year-old son that I was going away for what I had done for my gambling. Although I'm one of the lucky people who are in uh, uh, recovery, that my family has stayed by my side. My wife has always been my best friend, and my four kids are there to, to support them, <clears throat> which is, is, is difficult because, uh, the, f for me, the consequences I never thought of, uh, of the harm and the pain that I've given to them, uh, besides myself. Um, right now, my relationship is um, as well as can be expected. Um, I have a lot of support from family, um, so my family supports me in, in what, I'm, what I am doing, and they're also um, proud of how far I've, I've gotten in my um, recovery. Um, when I was indicted, I had a little bit of support from my family, but as time went on and it, after I was incarcerated, um, I had no contact with immediate family except for my brother and once in a while my sister. My friends who were um, my real friends stood by my side and I can count those individuals on one hand. I mean, I certainly lost the people that I worked with, you know, those are gone. Very few. For the most part, I have a lot of support. Oh, my relationships with my family um, were, were destroyed for many years. Um, I have elderly parents and they're, my mom is 88, my dad is four years younger. They stood by me the whole time. Um, that bond was never broken, but um, I have four, four brothers who for many, many years, up until two years ago, um, our relationships were just broken from um, my gambling. One day I, I, I made a phone call and I spoke to a woman who pointed me in the right direction. And uh, that was an incredible uh, achievement for me because I did not know where to go. I didn't know what to do. Um, I told you the story of driving down the Garden State Parkway once and calling the Jimmy Swagger Ministries because I didn't know, I, I, and I don't even know where I came up with his name. I just thought of this guy who got caught on TV because it was 4 a.m. in the morning and I was, I, was on my, so I was on the way to go through one of the guardrails. And uh, that didn't help at all, but uh, because the guy on the other end of the phone said, you, there's no helping you. So uh, it's not even funny, but um, I then called the gambling hot hotline and, and, and got somebody who uh, was tremendous and helped me. Yes, I feel very good about myself through, um, from the programs. Because of the programs I've gone through, I feel very good about myself, which has encouraged me to get more involved in um, and the gambling programs because I see how the other programs has helped me with my drugs and alcohol. So I believe that these other pro the programs and gambling can help me with my gambling. And I'm more focused now on the gambling than I am with the other with the drugs and alcohol because they're so related. And what I'm struggling with now is the gambling. So um, I seek more programs out for the gambling because I believe they they will help me in my recovery. So the two things that are hardest for people with a record, um, job and housing, I was able to get. I mean, I worked it, but I was able to get it. My biggest obstacles through this whole um, gambling devastation was um, the fear of losing my son by incarceration, um, being turned away by society, um, finding employment, my broken family, 
um, my criminal history. There's a lot of, the list goes on. There's many, many obstacles. My biggest obstacle is trying to rebuild my life. When I returned to Boston in 2000, in January of 2010, I had five dollars to my name and a gray sweatsuit. All my belongings were either sold for legal, to obtain le money for legal fees, and um, unfortunately I had subletted my apartment to an individual who lived there two months, never paid rent, and left with all my belongings. I struggle every month to pay restitution. The IRS is constantly hounding me. Um, recovery has been tough, but I feel that taking one day at a time will make it all better. Recovering from the shame is, is huge. It's like being on a plane. If, it's, if you're gonna help somebody on a plane, you need to grab that airbag first to help yourself. And without recovery or without some kind of strength within yourself, I, I am completely helpless. Um, so it, 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 it took a long time for me to, to go through the process, uh, almost three, three uh, meetings a week uh, of, at, at the connection and uh, three meetings at night at uh, GA to build that ground support. And, and, and I broke off a little bit as well going to mindfulness. So uh, without, those, the, without that support, I, I probably would, would not be able to even have this conversation with you today. I'm in the process of developing a support system now um, because I recognize um, where my gambling has taken me and it, how it affects my um, recovery in um, drugs and alcohol. So I've been seeking out support just recently in my gambling because I'm still struggling. Once I re um, returned to Boston in 2010, I started uh, attending GA meetings, which I found were not very helpful to me. So I have been seeing a private clinician um, weekly since 2010, and I did receive a lot of support from the Mass Council on Compulsive Gambling. Yeah, I mean, I, I, uh, I'm, a, I'm an optimist, which of course was the worst thing I could be as a gambler, but is the best thing I can be moving on in my life. So I, you know, I have a, a very strong uh, family support system. I have friends. I have my 12-step program people. I, have, I work at a place that knows everything about me and about my past. Um, and uh, I have those kind of supports. And whenever I need them, they're there. And I don't have any, any problem reaching out for help. Support groups are very helpful for me because they help keep me focused. Because, you know, I, I'm very forgetful. I can forget things, especially when things are going good. And um, support group helps keep me in reality. My foundation uh, was building on the more support I got. I actually even, off of um, the connection, I was able to even go to some uh, mindfulness and at a Buddha program on Monday nights, um, which was helpful. It really was. It's something I never explored before, and it gave me an inner strength to, uh, to, to battle and the confidence to battle what something that I didn't even realize I was battling. And my son today, who's 19, he was nine when it started, he, um, he's my backbone. He's my number one supporter. And I'm still his hero to him. And my mom and dad have never wavered. And um, I don't have many of those friends that was in my life at those time, at that time. Actually, when I was gambling, the friends I gambled with, um, but I have a great support system of friends today. Um, and my, like I said, my family is, and Donna, my husband, I wouldn't be able to get through today without any of them. Being in recovery is like uh, finding peace and balance that I never had in my life. I mean, really, even though my gambling didn't hit until I was 50, I'm almost 58, so it was late onset to gambling, I was never right my whole life. Uh, when I quit drinking, I never went into recovery, so I never understood what that meant. Um, and, you know, I remember walking around the track at the correctional facility. They had a track where you could walk outside, and I spent a lot of time outside. 
And the first few months I was there, which are of course the most difficult as you're getting used to it, I actually felt lighter, I felt free. And my recovery, even though I was incarcerated, I felt free. Uh, I have forgiven myself for the addictions I have. Um, I learned that if I keep feeling sorry for myself, I can't um, move on, I can't grow. I stay stuck in the past, and uh, as long as I'm in the past, I'm doomed for failure. I don't think I've, I've completely forgiven myself. I don't think I ever will completely. I'm not going to graduate from this or be an alumni from this. It's, uh, it's something that I can't show openly because I need to support, this, my family needs my support. And for me to go far, far further, I need to forgive myself. But to say and personally say I forgive myself, there's so much tragic involved and tragedy involved that it, it's, it's, it's hard. You, you, you just keep thinking to yourself, you'd be driving, just say, why? So in, in big, bold letters. Um, I think trying to move, I'm trying to move forward in a positive direction. Some days are harder. Um, I look back at 2005 and realize I was ready to commit suicide because I had no other options. I didn't have um, a lot to look forward to. Incarceration was a scary, scary thing. But I feel that with the help that I've had from my employer, I'm gonna get upset, and um, friends, it will get better. It takes a long time, but if you don't put one foot in front of the other and, and keep moving forward, you're not gonna get there. This film is dedicated to those who are in recovery, for those yet to come, and for those fellow gamblers who have lost their lives due to this addiction.